Ladies and gentlemen, our second fight is another light middleweight contest of four three-minute rounds. And introducing in the red corner, he wears the black shorts, weighing in at 11 stone, two and a half pounds. He comes out of Holloway, London, fighting in his fourth professional contest, Cobra Kulu. And in the blue corner, wearing the green shorts, weighing in at 11 stone, half a pound, fighting out of Nottingham with a professional record of four fights, three wins, one draw, three by KO, the former ABA welterweight champion, Jawaid Khalid. <laughs> and over to your referee, Mr. Ken Curtis. score the fight to do some of this. <laughs> Jawaid Kalik, we've seen him a few times on Sky Sports in the green trunks here up against Koba Kulu from Holloway in the black. Shawaid Kalik, who ended the unbeaten record of the postman Martin Holgate. And then he also beat another unbeaten fighter in Takaloo from Kent last time. Coming from behind, he, I think, has a bit more of a punch than possibly it seems. Former amateur star, won the ABA welterweight title in 1996 and is a Nottingham taxi driver to supplement his income as a professional boxer. Or maybe the boxing supplements the income as the taxi driver at the moment. It's probably that way around. And he's made a, a good a good start to his pro career. They've been willing to, to take a chance with him and push him forward. And he's you know, he's lived up to it. He's tall and rangy, but carries a little bit of a punch as well. So you know, he's looked good, Kalik. Yeah, eight knockdowns in four fights so far for Kalik. Rangy and plenty of leverage. Kulu did score an upset third round stoppage of the Palestinian Anas Awada, another Brendan Ingle fighter at Chess Hunt last month. Floored Awada with a left hook and stopped him. Picking his punches pretty well. He ought to have grown in confidence from those wins over Holgate and Takalu, didn't he? Yes, I think he's starting very calm here. Good right hand, just sent the legs shivering a bit. And he's got Kulu under pressure here. Reinforcing the impression of a puncher. Kalik here. And Kulu's in trouble. A rather distressed look on his face. His gloves have come down. He looks an open target. Kalik could take him out. Well, Kulu's quite inexperienced. He's long and rangy, but a little gangly. Hasn't really got uh, his style together yet. It's a bit of a brave match to put Kulu in with Kalik. Maybe they're gambling that he can come up with another upset. Well, Kulu gamely trying to fight back here. He's managed to catch Kalik with a couple of shots, and Kalik just stopped throwing punches for a while. Kalik is already 27, and Kulu already 30, although they are both novice professional boxers. So anything they are going to achieve in this business, they need to do relatively quickly. Kalik here landed some good punches in that first round, Glenn. Yes, I think for the, the first two thirds of the round, it was very good and it was all Kalik. He looked very confident, putting his punches together very well, three and four punch combinations. They're just catching 
Kulu coming in and the left hook and the right hand to follow it. And he kept it, he kept it on the pressure here with, with some good work. And Kulu was all over the place at times, but just managed to regroup and towards the end of the round managed to come back a little bit at Kalik. Good right hand there, Kulu forced backwards. Second round here then, Jawed Kalik. So far unbeaten in four contests, though one of them was a draw. That was against Mark Ramsey at Sheffield in December. Koba Kulu, originally from Kinshasa in Zaire, scene of the famous rumble in the jungle. Ali Foreman fight, 1974. He says he has clear memories of it, though he was only six at the time. I wonder how he was scoring it. Certainly not showing a defence as tight as Ali's that night. No, his hands are down very low. He's just pushing out that jab and Kalik's catching him. And Kulu very open over the top to a right hand. The jab holding his left hand very low and his jab's going out and coming back low. And I think at this moment, Kalik not building up with his, his punches as much. He's looking, seems to be looking for the big one. There's a good right hand and that splayed the legs of Kulu. Caught himself, Kalik, and then chooses to back off. Good comeback, that, by Koba Kulu. Having taken that punch, he found some ammunition of his own. Yes, he came out throwing punches and looked dangerous, but it just looked a, a little desperate, his work. But Kalik has to be wary of punches coming in from Kulu like that. But it did have the effect, didn't it, Glenn, of making Kalik call off the assault? Yes, he was on top and he was looking to land punches, and he just took a few seconds out there and he had to go on the defensive. He's definitely feeling the weight of Kalik's punches here, Kulu. There's a troubled look on his face. There's some blood from the nose as well. Can Three. Kalik put the punches together in clusters and force the stoppage? Decent looking right uppercut, whistling past the jaw of Kulu. coming dangerously close together there. And neither one managing really to break free and have any success at in-fighting. They're getting close and chopping away with punches, but no decent work inside. I tell you what, Kulu's taken some heavy shots, but he still wants to have a row in there, doesn't he? Yes, he's game enough. He's not really just... He's not folding up when he's under pressure. He's, he's got the right instinct to fight back. Another bad little fight, this. Mokoba Kulu has done well to stay on his feet so far because it has looked on more than one occasion as if he might hit the canvas. And that was one such occasion. I guess the legs did a, a funny dance there, but we see Kulu come fighting back. His, his instinct when he's heard is to to just rush back at Kalik, and he did land a, a shot in there. But Kalik getting the better of the round, there's the right hand, sending the legs all over the place, fighting for balance there, Kulu. And then catching Kalik with that left hand. So it's up, round three. Here's the third round then. And Jawed Kalik will be ahead at this point against Kulu. But he'll still be believing that somehow he can pull this out the fire, I'm sure. One win, two defeats so far for Kulu. 
three wins and one draw so far for Kalik. Well, technically, Kalik's much the, the better, but he does carry his head very high and his chin up in the air and occasionally has to pay for that. Let him go. Break! Yes, he's by no means the finished article. He has this kind of unhurried, almost leisurely way about him when he's in the ring too, doesn't he, Kelly? I think he could do with a shade more urgency. Yes, I think at times he needs to... He looks very good when he puts his combinations together, when he looks for three and four punches. When he goes for, for single punches or to try something heavy, it doesn't really come off and he's left... You know, looking a little awkward with his chin in the air. So he just needs to get the chin down and plant his legs and try behind the jab to put his combinations together. Kalik's corner have been shouting at him to step it up a bit. Got him with two right hands. So if he wasn't quite as stand up and straight, just rolled a little more, this might be quite a good fighter, this Kali. Yes, this, he certainly has ability and there's something, there's talent to work on. He just got to, you know, he just needs the, the finishing touches to, to get his technique right. And I think the blame, the obvious one, is the, the chin up, but he looks good on the offensive. He certainly plants his feet when he throws the punches with some venom. Open there to the right-hand counter. Right. It's obviously very right. strong as well, this Shawade Kalik. He is, incidentally, fighting in his hometown here. He lived here till he was six or seven. And then the family moved to Nottingham and the Taxi driving business came later. Kulu looking disorganized in defense there. Kalik's round again. Kalik firmly on top, getting through with the, the better work. He just can't find the, the, pun the punches to finish the job off. But he does have Kulu looking very disorganised at times. But often when he, when he does have Kulu under pressure, he just can't find the, the right punches. And also when he comes forward, he leaves his chin in the end. I think that's Kulu's best chance just to catch him on the counter. This is Kalik on the offensive here, putting his punches together. Decent right hand in there. And he timed that one pretty well too. Kulu glad to get away from the danger on those ropes, having taken that punch. Fourth and final round, and the lights have gone out. Would you believe it? Yes, you would believe it. <laughs> Here we go. Fourth round. We're underway now. Thanks for whoever put the 10 pence in the slot. The green trunks of Jawaid Kalik. And the black of Kulu. He's done well to stay on his feet so far, but he will have to take a count that he touched down with his gloves. Mandatory eight for him. Wanted to carry on straight away, and certainly would have done in the old days before mandatory eight. And what about that for an answer? This is a fellow with some fighting pride, I tell you. Yes, it also shows that Khalid, when he comes forward, is always open to a counter. Looking very unsteady on his feet now, though, Kobakulu. And I wonder if this is going to be another late stoppage for Khalid. Did something similar with Takalu, and he was behind in that one, or we thought he was anyway. Kulu hanging on for dear life there. He wants to get through this round if he can. Oh, 
caught again by the jab. His defence isn't the best, Kalik, and that is a worry for him as he moves up. Because he often gets caught as he, as he tries to come forward, Kalik. He's got to try and tighten up, get on his side and get that chin down. It's been a brave effort by Kobakulu. Been under pretty heavy fire most of the way. Some blood around the mouth for him as well. Kalik wants that stoppage, you sense. But it's pretty difficult to force a stoppage in a four rounder. He's worked hard, Kalik. He's landed with some good punches, but just couldn't find the, the right ones to finish the job. But Kulu certainly is game and has fought back every time he's been hurt. Leading with his right for the moment, Kalik. And found a left hand from that stance. And then it, look at this from Koba Kulu. For a moment there, Kalik looked horribly open. His defence does look dodgy, very dodgy. Well, he's a real hit or be hit operator. The bell has gone amid all that. Kalik has the win for the last 20 seconds or so of the contest. Made it a rather unconvincing spectacle. I hope he finds as many openings in the traffic when he's driving his taxi as there were in his defence there at the end. Yes, he almost let it all slip with that bad defence. He comes in, his hands are down wide open at times, and he often caught on the way in. But Kulu was, was very game. This is the alone almost a knockdown. Certainly he had to take account his arm. No, he, went he, he down. touched down. He touched down with the glove, Glenn. That's right, so it, it, it counts. But then, again, he's caught with a, a big, solid left jab. And then at the end of the round, Kobakulu came back, and we just wondered whether in the final seconds he might somehow pull it around. But uh, Kalik got through. Look where his gloves are. This is defence is very poor. He managed just to duck out of the way there, and you know, Kulu just would have liked a little bit more time. Interesting, very interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, another excellent four rounds. Referee Ken Curtis judged the fight. 40-37 in favour of the winner, Jawe Kalik. And a sporting hand for a gutsy opponent, Koba Kulu.